Hi, this is Rich Anderson here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to blow out the water lines in your trailer so you don't have to use antifreeze in the water lines. My family's been doing this since the 70s. My dad did it. My brother does it. I've always done it this way and never had a problem. The first thing you want to do is make sure your storage tank, your water storage tank, is empty and I'm gonna need to put a pair of pliers on that one because <clears throat> the handle has come off so it's just a matter of quarter turn to open that on my particular trailer which is a 2017 grand design imagine I have low point drains on the back of the trailer which is underneath the bathroom sink and the uh, water heater uh, a lot of people drain their water heater right here um, I don't have it have to do that because my low point drain will drain the water heater as well so I removed the plugs from the low point drain at some point I'm gonna put some uh, valves in there so I don't have to actually take the plugs off which are right here I can just turn the valve to open them which also makes a good point to, uh, if you want to wash your hands when you're outside camping, you can just open the valve and do so. Anyway, as you can see, I'm getting a lot of water out of that. That is just coming from the piping. Um, correction, it's coming from the piping and it's coming from the hot water heater. It's coming out of the, the blue line because the, uh, immediately above that, there's a T where it feeds the uh, hot water heater. So that's why we're getting so much out of it now. So it's draining out. <coughs> I also have opened up the drain on the fresh water tank. So as I said earlier, you can't really see it from this angle, but coming off the bottom of the uh, water heater, now you can see it there, is that uh, white T that points down and it goes down to the down through the floor and that's the uh, the low point drains you can see the uh, <coughs> the white and the red lines going through the floor um, I guess it tees off under the floor and goes to other locations as well but basically that's where your low point drain is down below us so that will drain your water heater completely so what we have here is an air compressor runs on 110 volts um, it's not something you can use a, uh, a tire inflator air compressor that plugs into your cigarette lighter because you're not going to get enough flow out of it. Uh, I haven't got the airline connected to it yet, but it is connected to the trailer. Uh, there's an adapter that I purchased this on Amazon, and it just screws into the water line, and it's got an airline on the other end that's an adapter. Um, additionally, it looks like this, the one for the airline. This is just a quick connect adapter to a garden hose, which goes in uh, the spray port, because you're gonna need to drain that as well to do your winterization. Okay, we're gonna start putting the air pressure to it. And it's not the pressure, it's the volume going through it. I have my regulator set at about 60 PSI. All right. Pressure is going into it. You can hear the air flowing. Okay. So this is what you can expect to get. What you want to do is do this to each individual fixture. Any place that has water coming out of it, you got to make sure that the water is out and the air is in it. Keep doing this until you don't get any more water out. So the last thing that you want to do is pour antifreeze down your traps 
to keep the traps from freezing and breaking. You want to make sure that it says uh, RV Marine Antifreeze or RV Antifreeze. If you use automotive antifreeze, it is deadly. It only takes a few drops to kill people. Uh, that being said, it doesn't require a whole lot. You just want to displace the water that's in the, in the traps. And uh, that's about it. Um, last reminder is you want to make sure that you um, run air through your spray ports. On mine I have two. And uh, I have a uh, automatic, well maybe not automatic, but I have a tank fill valve down in the compartment so I can fill my freshwater tank. You want to blow that out as well. And uh... So the next thing we're going to do is turn on our water pump. Now, there's no water in the tank, so the pump is going to try to main make pressure. So what we want to do is put a little air into that pump so that we get majority of the water out of it. We've got a little water coming out now, but it doesn't take a lot of air, it just gives it a a little place for it to go when the water that's in there freezes up. Back to the pump, <clears throat> I've taken the uh, strainer uh, from underneath the pump off. It just unscrews, it's just finger tight. It's got a couple little O-rings in there as you can see. Um, and again, that lets more water out of the pump uh, if there is any. I'll, I'll run the pump again just for a few seconds just to get uh, any extra water out of there uh, that may be in the pump itself. But once you get an air pocket in the top of the pump, it will give a place for any ice that forms in there a place to go. As far as the batteries go, if you just turn off the uh, battery disconnect, it doesn't actually turn everything off and the batteries will be dead probably in about a week or so. Uh, all you need to do is disconnect one wire from each battery, uh, and that's all I do. I don't put a trickle charger on it personally. Some people do. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do check the voltage on each battery in the spring before they, I hook them back up. Uh, I'm not going to be doing this today because I have to pull the trailer to where I'm going to be storing it for the winter. So that's about it from Whitingham, Vermont. Uh, I hope this answers all your questions about uh, winterizing your trailer without using uh, antifreeze in the lines. Um, I've always done it this way and never had any problems personally. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them at the bottom. Rich out.